Everyday Life with Guards Mares, Chapter 23, Part 2. Lily could get through today, and she could get through tomorrow, and she could get through as many days as it took for all of it to wear off. And then maybe, having consciously experienced the whole magical overload thing from end to end, even if it's spread out by the totem's power, she could bring herself to actually wear her Centurion's badge. That would be nice. As Lily found herself reaching a zenith of calm and blissful optimism for the future, the Royal Engineer emerged from the changing room. Instead of his black three-piece suit, he was wearing a pair of white trousers with a colorful pair of red stripes on the sides that continued up into a white long sleeve t-shirt. It was a considerable upgrade from the ratty, gray jogging clothes that he claimed to have arrived in. Well, how is this for cool weather wear? Turning his back to Lily, Anonymous stood before the mirrors and looked himself over, adopting a few simple poses to check the fit. It's a good fit. A very good fit. A very, very good fit. Lily had to snap herself out of it when the Royal Engineer looked over her shoulder at her, and she realized that she had been staring at his ass the whole time. Uh, it looks good, sir. Much more fashionable than what you had before. Excellent. Sergeant, any comments? Sergeant Ebenshield said something, but it just went in one ear and out the other, as Lily was back to gawking at her VIP. His new pants tightly wrapped around the shapely couture of his buttocks. Every time he moved to adopt a new pose, he could see his taut cheeks flex and sway, like he was wearing nothing at all. It's so hypnotic. Even his shirt hugged the form of his body, and Lily could make out the ripples of muscle around his broad shoulders and in the small of his back. When he turned to face her, she could make out a firm but flat chest that undulated as he took deep breaths. Wow. Her admiration for this upright, hairless monkey's physical form was briefly interrupted when he donned a hooked pullover handed to him by the sales pony. It was for colder weather, apparently. After pulling it on, adjusting to it properly, she got another fantastic view of his ass, as he did a little jogging in place to feel how it all fit together. I don't know, it almost feels like it ought to be let out a bit. No! Fuck, did I just say that out loud? Lily resisted the urge to slap an embarrassed stuff to her face. Anonymous lifted an eyebrow and turned around to look at her, and even the sergeant narrowed her dark eyes slightly. It looks great it is, sir. Baggy clothes are extremely unfashionable. There was nothing for it but to continue on as if she were being sincere, rather than making her foolish attraction obvious. The sales pony nodded and spoke something in agreement with her, but Lily barely paid any attention. Struggling to regain control, she tried to look at something, anything else. The other clothes on the rack, the sales pony, the sergeant a few paces away. But with Anonymous standing in the fitting area, even the slightest motion that he made was mirrored six times over, and it was impossible to keep her eyes from snapping over to his movement. You could bounce a quarter of bitcoins off of that plot of his. Lily started to feel sweaty and disoriented again, like when she first realized what was going on. Mercifully, just as the heat started to get unmanageably intense, the Royal Engineer headed back into the changing room. However, the removal of the visual stimulus didn't grant her much of a reprieve from the emotional instability ride. If anything, it made it worse, because her imagination took what she saw and went wild. At first, this started tame, with just the Royal Engineer jogging along in that incredibly well-fitted outfit, and Lily galloping by his side but it was warm out and she was panting. Beside her, the hairless ape with a fantastic plot was breathing heavily as well, his forehead glistening with sweat. With whatever magical ability he had that let him keep going for so long, she soon found herself falling behind, unable to go on. She stopped, lowering her head to the ground and her neck and chest covered in foamy sweat. But that's when she felt powerful arms wrap around her barrel. Come with me, Lily, he said, even though they were not on a first name basis. With an enthusiastic, masculine grunt, the alien cult brusquely lifted her up and put her over her shoulder, as if she were just a sack of oats to him. Sitting in the sofa in the cultsware store, she could almost feel Anonymous' hand supporting her croup and plot. She tried shifting her posture in the seat, but it didn't change anything. Those nimble fingers of his were dangerously close to some very sensitive places, and she could have sworn that she could make out every single one of them on her, even though the only thing beneath her in reality was just plushly upholstered furniture. Then her imaginary Anonymous resumed his jog, slowly at first, and then more vigorously, until she could feel herself bobbing up and down, riding on his broad shoulders. Closing her eyes, Lily put a hoof up to her forehead. This isn't real, damn it! you're just sitting on a couch in a clothing store! She was most assuredly not being carried away on the shoulders of a tall, strong, sweaty beast with a plot that just wouldn't quit. <sighs> no, wait! Even if she was there, at best, the Royal Engineer was just helpfully getting her back into the palace. He'd put her down once she had a chance to catch her breath. It wasn't like he was gonna jog right up to the steps of the patio behind his office to sneak her back into the palace with him where no pony would see them together. 
And even if he did do that, it would just be because it was the fastest way inside. Back inside the palace! It wasn't like he was going to passionately pull her off of his shoulder, kiss her deeply, lay her down on his bed, and- No, 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 damn it, stop going there! Just then, the royal engineer, the real one, not her foolish man of fever dream induced cult, emerged from the changing room once more, and her heart skipped a beat. Dressed in what the appallingly excellent tailors at the Bridal Path Clothiers had determined would be appropriate hot wear exercise wear, Anonymous' second outfit left almost nothing to the imagination. A haltier shirt exposed every inch of the broad, well-muscled shoulders of her dream. Tight, stretchy shorts exposed even more of his strong, firm hips and ass. And a large, ample bulge at the front sent her delusion roaring back into the foreground. Now she was on his bed, muzzle down, plot up. She bit her lip in reality as his illusory fingers spread themselves across her flanks, running through the short hair of her sides and belly. He was bent over forward, his taut abdomen pressing against her back, his hot breath brushed against her neck as he nibbled playfully at her ears. She heard herself moan, and it took every ounce of concentration that she had left not to make that part of the fantasy a reality. His left hand slowly slipped back and instinctively she felt herself lifting her tail to let him in. Now this is something, isn't it? Opening her eyes to reality again, the real royal engineer was admiring himself in the mirrors, pleased with the way he looked. Lily found herself gupping for air in the brief reprieve that was afforded to her. Over on her left, Sergeant Ebenshield had either become aware of her incapacity for rational thought right now, or decided to simply speak her mind first. This outfit is most fetching, sir. I think the Great Lord will turn many heads exercising in this. I didn't really have that effect in mind, but it's certainly very comfortable. Anonymous began to pose again in the mirrors, performing a few squats, thrusts, and lunges, as the conversation drowned out in a blur. She was back in bed with him, and this time, there was no question of innuendo or foreplay. One hand gripped her shoulder and the other her hip, as her fantasy cult passionately gave her the most indescribably orgasmic pounding of her life. Lily's breath caught in her throat, both in reality and in the fantasy, as he continued inexhaustibly, sweat dripping from his chest onto her back. On the sofa, she bit her lower lip, as on the bed, he lowered his lips and kissed her neck. Over on the fitting room podium, the royal engineer said something to the sales pony, but in bed, she could only hear him moan and grunt with cultish passion. She felt him stop inside of her, in all the way to his hilt, and his hand squeezed her firmly. Unable to contain the figment any longer, she closed her eyes in ecstasy. But at the very moment when he squeezed her tightly and achieved his blissful release, something snapped Lily back to reality. And would so like to be fitted for his gala suit this morning? Our availability is filling up quickly. Her eyes snapped open, and the reverie disappeared in a flash. The gala! The Grand Galloping Gala! The royal engineer would be invited to the gala, and that mean that she might be able to go with him. Fucking awesome! That was quite an interesting imagination. That's... that's all I can say. Just interesting. Now what are the others thinking? That's the true question. Anywho, let's get on to our royal donators. Top donators Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Lyrae, Dosbo, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runescythe9852, Madman Stan, Leslie Perkett, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line God 12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hud Zaza, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.